Okay, so one of the things I know we're running into ECCC compliance issues in our last video that came out. We've got some bad news. The government of Canada has now stopped us from building diesel electric semi trucks. We are still going ahead with a Scania generator. We're still confident that we'll get one of those exemptions and we got the N2O data that we can submit from Scania to help that application. There's no point in stopping what we're doing. We're still moving ahead with a hybrid. I'm gonna put that Scania generator in there and we'll just keep submitting it until Environment Climate Change Canada says, yes, you can build a hybrid. So we just got wheel spin yesterday on the undisclosed truck. Now it's time to start working on the MCON. So time to finally put the Scania engine into the first BDE. That's not that bad. That weighs 4,000 pounds. All right, so we did a little test fit there. And uh, one of the things though, is that because this has those electric fans, we don't need the fan assembly. So we got to just basically take off this part. I'm actually pretty happy with the way this thing turned out. This thing is starting to look like a truck now. It's not just frame rails and a chassis. We got that Scania engine placed. We got the radiator placed. And I gotta admit, I I'm, think I'm really starting to like the way this thing is looking. This thing looks mean for a snow plow. One thing though, is that this thing's got a rad support that gets tied in. When we put the cab on, we'll also put the rad support. So we just put a couple of tie backs for right now to hold it. Wanted it on there. We can check the fitment, made sure everything fit. We did have to take off that front fan hub assembly just to get that clearance. That's off, it was redundant anyways. But then we'll get some rad supports, delete these. Fenders have been ordered. Why don't we go have a look at the different stages some of the cabins are in, because uh, different people have been working on at different paces. So let's go have a look at mine. <laughs> I live here full time. I've been just, I'm not as far as I want to be, but I only have like an hour or two in the evening to just putter around. Okay, so this is my cabin right here. As you can see, I got uh, all these windows here, which has been amazing in the summertime because I can open these windows up. I'm out on the edge of the peninsula and that breeze blows right across the bed. Of course, I got a cover on here because I've got a dog door in my cabin and these guys <laughs> love to play in the rain. I got this counter in and uh, work in sync. This was nice, Travis that runs a sawmill had a couple of these wood boards sitting around. Uh, they were left over way in the back. Uh, I dug them out, put them in there because it made a cheap free countertop, made the stands out of reclaimed woods. Uh, I've got some of the reclaimed tongue and groove up. I'm still waiting to finish my shower. I got to do that. I got to do the tiling, but hot water isn't hooked up anyways. At least I got a working toilet. I don't have a sink in here yet, but Got other more important things to do than worrying about my house. I got the basic functions. So Ray's is a lot less developed, but Ray's only here part-time. He comes up for a week and he leaves for a week. He just got here. Last night we were helping him. Been putting in the washroom. We got some flooring in here, but we got to put the shower in, get his shower and sink hooked up. We're trying to convince Ray's wife to move up here with us so that Ray can be here full-time. He does amazing work. It'd be nice to have him here. But like you say, he's sleeping on an air mattress. So like, we gotta fix some of these things. This one is Theron's cabin, mainly the kids room. So we're getting the boards up here, putting the walls up, separating the bedrooms. We wanted to focus on the kids room first, cause obviously 
my opinion, the kids are more important than the adults. The adults can deal with vapor barrier, but let's get it done for the kids here first. Right here, I think this is one of our most important cabins. This is the utility shed. So it's got a garage door. We can put things like a lawnmower, common tools that all the cabins need, cleaning supplies, yard maintenance stuff can all just be stored in this cabin rather than buying that stuff for every individual cabin. We'll just buy it, store it here. Other cool thing is that the electricians came out and they ran the power to every single one of these cabins. So each one of these um, tech cables goes to one of the cabins, gets it hooked up. In here, we've got our main breakers to shut power off between the cabins. This is the main power coming in from the hydro line. We're still waiting on BC Hydro to hook that up, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, but it's a government agency and it does take a while to get through that permitting process for it, but that's nice. All the electrical is ran to the cabins. We've got our outlets, our plugs, our sockets all wired in. So as soon as we get that connected to the grid, everyone's gonna have power. Then what we're gonna do over here is this, this is uh, lined in. We just gotta run the plumb in here and we're gonna put in a couple washing machines. We got a washer and dryer down at the shop, but we're gonna keep using those for like coveralls, dirty work clothes. Over here, people can just take their laundry. Then we don't have to install a washer and a dryer in every single cabin. We'll just have one common spot for people to do their laundry. That's gonna be right nice. We've got all of our tool sheds laid out. One of the other big updates on this cabin since filming that first segment and this segment with the utility room is that I guess we got some huge fans at Brooklyn Bedding and they saw that our guys were sleeping on air mattresses and cots and they're like, guys, you can't have that. We wanna support you. You're gonna, your employees are gonna do way better work if they're getting a good quality night's sleep. They sent us six or seven free mattresses just so that our employees could have a better night's sleep. And if you are thinking about getting a new mattress and you wanna support the guys supporting us, make sure you go check out Brooklyn Bedding. They've been in business for about 30 years. They assemble them, design them all here in North America. They literally sent us a video of their factory to prove that this stuff was built here in North America. So I do appreciate that. And um, because they're fans of the channel, they offered everybody on this channel 30% off if you're thinking about getting a new mattress. Enter the code Edison Motors. Uh, I think there's a QR code here or something that we could use, but yeah. These are quality mattresses. The guys have said that they've been having a great night's sleep on them. So big thanks to them. Thanks for making sure that our employees have a good night's sleep, guys. This is the king size. It's a medium firm. It's great for my back, great for my hips. It's really comfortable. My wife will now start coming up here because it's no longer an air mattress. They, it's super excited to have a real mattress again. Great quality of sleep. I can't say enough about it. Thank you. Another thing is this bed is awesome. I don't know what it's called, motion isolation maybe. It's when you move and you can't really feel the person next to you. That's important for the kids so they don't wake each other up and also my wife in our bed because I have restless legs and I move around a lot at night. She gets mad at me for waking her up. So now with this, she can't feel me moving while I'm beside her. Well, super stoked. We ended up getting our audited statements done for 2024. I know it's July, it's a bit late, but huge accomplishment. These are IFRS statements, not ASP. So a huge step and accomplishment for the whole team. What does IFRS mean? International financial statements. This means that we're one step closer to potentially being a publicly traded company. Hey guys, it's Spencer Boats here again with Hardwork Industries. We're working on the shop pad lately. We're in the middle of summer right now and we're getting ready to bring in the concrete and build the foundation for the steel building. The land has a natural descend at about 2% in both directions. So obviously your shop pad's flat. So first step is we had to cut out all the bad material. We had a geotech out here who did some test holes in the previous video. And there's a layer of subsoil we had to remove. So we had to go down about half a meter on everything. And then we got to bring it back up in a flat pad to the grade that we want, to the elevation that we want. So we can only build it up in six inch layers using engineered material. So it's really high quality gravel. Luckily in the corner of our site, there is engineered fill. There's a really good gravel pit just nearby. So we're able to load our rock truck locally and bring in the engineered fill and lay it in those six inch layers. And then I also have my packer going every six inches. The packer goes over everything and we also add water. So it's a lot of work, but we're gonna get this foundation built up to a flat pad. We're gonna go a little bit too wide in all directions. And then we had a guy named Tim, nice enough, TEG Contracting out of Alberta. He volunteered to bring his excavator out and join the project because he was so impressed with the team and all the work that we had going on. 
Edison Motors in general, he was at the investor meeting. So Tim brought his excavator out a few days ago and he's gonna be in charge of the concrete pad, the shop foundation and the pilings and forming on the perimeter of the building, which is what supports all the weight and does all the heavy lifting and supports that steel structure. Thanks Tim for bringing your stuff out and we look forward to working with them. Okay, so Spencer and the boys from Hardwork Industries, they got this pad done. They got those six inches lifted. They got it wetted, packed in. Then we got a surveyor come out. They laid out where the shop is gonna be. So the next step is TEG is gonna come out with their excavator, dig those trenches. And in the meantime, we're gonna go talk to Rob in the shop, see where he's at for all the rebar and the footings. So we're here in the old planer mill warehouse with Rob who's handling all the concrete for us right now. Why don't you give us an update, where are we at on production wise for concrete? Well, we're just cruising right along. Joe's getting that pad ready and just prefabricating as much of the rebar and stuff as we can. And we got a small team working here and there. It's, it's really happening. Right on, well, why don't you walk through us? What have you built? What are the parts for? I don't know much about concrete. I'm kind of learning from you as we go here. Well, we have these uh, gable end cages for the rebar, for the footings, for the gable end of the building. And this here is, the mats for the slabs that's going to be for the entire building. We prefabbed 30,000 square feet of those on that jig over there, and that worked quite well. Nice. So we got all of this prefab. So all we got to do is come over here with a crane excavator, reach in here, get them loaded up, put on the trailer, and then we'll truck them over to the shop as required and as Joe's ready. Absolutely. Right on. So these are for the upgrades. What do we got? What are these things here? These are a lot bigger than those. That's right. Well, these are the gantry crane foundation, right? So you're going to have the, not only the bent of the building, like the structure of the building resting on that foundation, but you're also going to have that gantry crane, which is, as you can imagine, quite heavy and can take a very large load. So these are quite large. The bases of these are three and a half meters by three meters. And then they step up again to two and a half meters by two meters. Then they have these columns on top. So basically because the gantry crane's a lot heavier, these ones are a lot bigger than these ones. Absolutely. That makes sense. Let's, uh, let's go have a look at the wood forms you built. These are the uh, three and a half meters by three meters, and then with another layer of two and a half meters by two meters, and then our column goes on top of that, and that's what that cage was. So yeah, they're quite large. There's over six meters of concrete per footing. So yeah, it's, it's no joke. So those flat ones, those flat bars that we loaded up onto the back end of the trailer, those flat pieces of rebar go in here, and then those columns of rebar go in the middle. That's right. And then wrap it up with the form. Put the anchor bolts on it, Get then the drop bolts. the shop on. You betcha. All right, so I am here with Brody, who is helping Rob out with all this rebar, the concrete, the foundation here. And Brody, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us what we were doing. Yeah, cool. So I'm Brody Kieber from Golden Snowmax and Kieber Contracting. We've decided to build a motocross track out here in Donald and a little go-kart track for the high school race teams. We got great views, we got great neighbors, and it's about time that we built something a little more sustainable. We have tracks all over BC and Alberta closing, so it'd be nice to put something here permanent, and with your guys' help, we're gonna be able to do that. Yeah, I think it was absolutely unacceptable that these motocross and dirt bike tracks are shutting down. People need a spot to race. We have 300 acres of land. We have extra room. We can use that for testing our go-karts. We can have the motocross racing, the high school racing here. After we're done this, Brody's gonna bring some of his heavy equipment out and we're gonna build a motocross track right here. So I, I'm excited for that. And yeah. thanks for coming out and helping out with all the rebar and that. Really no appreciate it. I appreciate it. Now that we got that rebar loaded up, brought over here, the next thing we gotta do is we gotta place the forms, place the rebar, we can start pouring concrete, but that'll be a future video update. I gotta say, for how much is going on here between employee housing, building the test track for CMVSS, building a brand new shop while still keeping production going on the existing trucks that we have to deliver, things are going really well. They're happening fast. I'm really impressed with the whole crew here at Edison. Everyone's stepping up, we're getting it done. Things are going well. So stay tuned on the next one because one of the next videos is either gonna be one of the trucks driving, concrete going into the pad, or some heavy equipment update on the test track.